After dozens of allegations of sexual assault, entertainer and icon Bill Cosby is now facing his first criminal charges. Prosecutors say the incident that happened in 2004 at Cosby's home outside of Philadelphia is what we're talking about tonight. The alleged victim is a former Temple University employee who prosecutors say thought of Cosby as a friend and a mentor. The victim says Cosby gave her pills and wine before sexually assaulting her. Under Pennsylvania law, prosecutors have a 12-year deadline to bring charges in a sex assault case. So the statute of limitations for this case is due to expire at the end of next month. Joining us now to discuss what's next is attorney Paige Pate. Good to have you here and happy early new year. Great to be here. Happy new year to you. So let's talk about this. Prosecutors actually declined to bring charges against Cosby in this exact case right. way back in 2005, citing not enough evidence. So what's different now? Well, the first thing is we have a different district attorney and it's always the prosecutor's discretion whether to bring charges or not. We have a he said, she said situation back then, this prosecutor who was in charge back then probably said, I don't want to bite off a case like this. A lot of publicity, it's high profile, and I don't have a lot of corroborating evidence. Now, we have 50 plus other people who are saying the same thing happened to them, and we have inconsistent statements in his deposition. So there's more evidence, and we got a different guy in charge. In the 50 or so other cases you've just mentioned, mm -hmm. the statutes have run out. So their cases won't be impacted, but their cases could impact this one. That's exactly right. There is one case case out there where the statute is not running. Ah, that okay. may be broad, but yes, in most federal courts, in all federal courts and in most states, you can use evidence of other alleged sexual assaults <laughs> to prove the case that's in court for that particular charge. So I bet the prosecutor is going to bring some of these people in to make the same type of allegation, and that's very compelling evidence. We were, a moment ago, we were looking at video of Mr. Cosby entering the courthouse, leaving the courthouse. He's 78 now. He appears frail. He seemed to stumble as he was exiting the SUV. You'll see that here in a moment on this tape. The defense now saying, we make no mistake. We intend to mount a vigorous defense against these unjustified charge, and we expect that Mr. Cosby will be exonerated by a court of law. What is their defense? And do they bring in the fact that he's 78? Probably, uh, but their best defense is going to be, this happened a long time ago. The allegations, even though she came forward a year after the incident, you know, 10 plus years ago, were not enough to convince a prosecutor at that time, and nothing has changed other than the financial motivation in these civil suits. They will also say that while he admitted a lot of this conduct, even back then, there was the uh, groping that occurred, I did give her some pills, mm -hmm. it was consensual. So the state's gonna have to prove that she was so out of it that she didn't know what's going on in that can be a difficult thing to do. We'll obviously continue to talk about that case. Let's talk about one other high profile case right now and the so-called affluenza teen. His name, Ethan Couch. We have been following as there was a search underway to locate Ethan and his mother. They've been found in Mexico and the curiosity here is not only that there will be some charges against the young man, but charges against his mom now, too. Right. Harboring a fugitive is basically the charge, and she's facing a lot more time than he's facing because she's an adult, and she allegedly committed this crime as an adult. She'll be punished as an but adult. But he's an adult now. He is an adult now, but the sentence that was initially imposed was imposed in juvenile court. So you can't change the sentence. You can just punish him for violating his probation. That term affluenza, I think when it first surfaced during the initial sentence, for the original drunk driving charge. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people say, what is that? I've never heard of that before. It, it is new, and, and I think some defense lawyers, when you have kids like this, if you can bring in a psychologist who tries to give the judge some other explanation for the conduct other than this is a troubled kid that we can't change. You may criticize the judge for the initial sentence, but that was the sentence that's imposed. Mm -hmm. They can't change it now. They can just punish him for not abiding by his probation. And just moving forward, quickly wrapping up with one late afternoon development. The couches aren't on their way back anytime soon. No, they're fighting the deportation. They filed a writ there in Mexico to try to contest it. So they're going to be there at least a couple of weeks, maybe longer. Interesting. Paige Pate, thank you very much. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We'll see you again, of course, in the new year.